Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture 5 on Automotive and Vehicle Dynamics. In this lecture 5, we are going to cover steering mechanism. Let us have a small explanation about this steering and then after we look at the uh, slides. The main function of steering is to convert the rotary motion of the steering wheel to the linear motion of the road wheels. The steering is used to turn front wheels using hand operation so that the driver can change the direction of the vehicle. The mechanism consists of universal joints which easiest the job of the driver to deviate the vehicle from the same line of directions. And next we have uh, any moving vehicle can easily control only by the help of steering mechanism or steering wheel. We'll have a look at uh, basic steering systems. This basic steering systems has three main parts. We look at each of them. The first one is a steering box connected to the steering wheels and then the linkage connecting the steering box to the wheels assembly at the front axle or at the front wheels. Front suspension parts let the wheel assembly to pivot. Next, next we have steering is a collection of linkages and components which allows the vehicle to flow in the desired path or desired course. The primary purpose of steering system is to allow the driver to guide the vehicle. Next in this slide let us have a clear look about gears used in steering system. Uh, this is further divided into four, four parts. Let us look at each of them. First one is rack and pinion type and second one is recirculating ball type and third one is worm and wheel type and fourth one is cam and double roller type. We look at each of them in brief. First one is rack and pinion type. Let us have a small discussion. Rack and pinion type steering uses a gear setup which is used to convert the circulating motion of a steering wheel into a linear motion that linear motion that requires the vehicle to turn. It also provides a gear reduction so that the turning wheels becomes easier. Next uh, we can have a clear look about uh, this rack and pinion type. This rack and pinion type generally uh, consists of a pinion joint which is directly connected to the steering shaft and this rack is uh, consists of axle which is directly connected to the front axle. In this rack and pinion type we can get 100% of output work so that this rack and pinion type is most widely used in many cars when compared to all other four types. We look at next type that is recirculating ball type. Let us have a clear explanation about how does this recirculating ball type will work. This recirculating ball type has a worm shaft upon which a, a ball circulating uh, mounting will be present. Everything will be same, entire working uh, principle will be same. Instead of rack and pinion type, in the place of rack and uh, pinion is placed, we are going to place this recirculating ball type mechanism. The entire uh, rest will be same, but when compared to rack and pinion type, this recirculating ball type uh, will require more maintenance and this is having a, uh, this required a complicating, complicated design wheel type. This is also same like rack and pinion type, instead of rack we are using warm wheel and warm shaft. Uh, this warm, warm wheel is directly connected to the steering so that it can uh, so that it can um, move the warm shaft. Next we have a fourth type. Next type we have cam and double roller type. This is the most rarely used mechanism. This requires a very complex design and uh, this also requires more maintenance. In fact, it has a very less life lifetime when compared to all other three mechanisms. Uh, we have our next type. 
in this slide we look at the type of power assisted used during steering here we have uh, two types first one is manual steering and second one is electrical power steering in manual steering generally rack and pinion type will be used and uh, this uh, manual steering uh, is a long life and uh, uh, when compared to all other uh, steerings rack and pinion type uses a uh, very uh, easy design and it is uh, very less it consists of very less uh, maintenance and uh, cheaper in cost and next we look at uh, electrical power steering in this electrical power steering uh, let us have a small discussion about uh, electrical power steering generally uh, electrical control unit will be present which will run the uh, electric motor and uh, the main functionation of this uh, electrical uh, uh, steering mechanism is to transmit the required torque given by the driver and to maintain the steering angle okay um, this uh, um, electrical power steering mainly consists of two types first one is electrical unit and electrical control unit and uh, if this electrical control unit does not work it also mounted with a uh, sun gear mechanism so that in the case of failure of this electrical uh, electrical uh, control unit the driver can also handle the vehicle by the help of this sun gears let us have a clear view about all this electrical uh, control unit and sun gear in next next slide we look at that yeah classification based on the types of uh, steering linkages and mechanism used generally uh, mechanism generally uh, steering constructions are of two types first one is ackerman steering mechanism and second one is dial steering mechanism okay and next we have based on the type of front axle used in this we have two types first one is independent wheel suspension and second one is rigid axle suspension this independent wheel suspension and rigid axle wheel suspension we have already discussed in our suspension uh, lecture if you have not watched my suspension lecture do watch my suspension lecture then you can have a great grip over this steering mechanism let us have a clear look about ackerman steering uh, mechanism and dial steering mechanism this is the example of an ackerman steering mechanism and uh, the next we have uh, this is the example of an uh, dial steering mechanism let us have a clear look about uh, ackerman steering mechanism and the dial steering mechanism and uh, let us discuss the difference between the ackerman and dial in ackerman entire steering mechanism will be placed back side of the front axle as we have seen that uh, entire steering mechanism is arranged at the back side of the steering uh, back side of the front axle whereas in davis uh, entire steering mechanism is placed at the front side of the uh, front axle um, we look at uh, ackerman it consists of only turning pace whereas in davis it consists of both uh, turning and uh, sliding pace uh, we look at ackerman uh, less wear and uh, tear will be involved in ackerman whereas in davis more wear and tear will be involved ackerman mechanism is very rarely used davis mechanism is very highly used for a wide range of uh, automobiles it does not required more efficient during turnings whereas davis required more effects uh, during turning uh, in ackerman it needed less space for uh, mounting the entire uh, ackerman steering uh, type whereas in uh, davis it required larger space uh, in next next we will get uh, in ackerman skidding is higher whereas in davis skidding will be lower ackerman is an appropriate mechanism whereas davis is an clear and perfect mechanism the maintenance cost of an ackerman mechanism will be low uh, whereas the maintenance cost of an uh, davis steering mechanism is high Uh, we look at uh, next slide yeah in this video you can have a clear uh, explanation about manual transmission and uh, automatic transmission how does that uh, sun gear are arranged how does how does uh, 
this uh, electronical control uh, unit has arranged how it is working entire uh, briefly you can understand in this view in this video please do watch the contact the point, contact of, the point of the wheel you can see that the rotational velocity is inclined, but the translational velocity is straight. Due to this, the velocities will not cancel each other out, and this will lead to skidding. The only way to achieve the zero velocity condition is to make sure the translational velocity is also inclined. This is possible only when the whole car turns with respect to a particular center point. In this snapshot, this fact is shown perfectly. Here, all four wheels meet the perfect conditions of rolling. One major thing to be noted here is that, for such a perfect turn, the perpendicular lines from the front wheels should meet the real wheel axis at a common point. This condition is the principle of steering. If you observe carefully, you will note that the angles turned by the left and right wheels are not the same. This means that for perfect steering, the left and right wheels should turn at different angles. The steering mechanism is used to carry out this purpose. The most commonly used steering mechanism in modern vehicles is the rack and pinion type. Let's see how this mechanism manages to steer the vehicle. A rack is at the center of this mechanism. This rack is constrained so that it can only move in a straight line. The pinion, which comes from the steering, can make this rack move. A part called a steering arm is attached to both of the wheels. This part is constrained so it only has a rotational motion along the axis shown. The steering arm is connected to the car frame via a roller bearing. This makes sure that it can only turn. A tie rod connects the steering arm to the rack. The tie rod can have both translational and rotational motion. Now, just observe what happens to the wheels when the rack moves. You can see that the left and right wheels are turning at different angles. If you track the meeting point of the left and right wheels, you can see the meeting point always lies on the rear wheel line. Thus, the rack and pinion mechanism perfectly satisfies the conditions needed for steering. Due to this, the vehicle makes a turn without slipping. The steering we have discussed so far was the manual type. Nowadays, electric motor assisted power steering is widely used on most cars. Electric power steering makes the steering action effortless and more accurate. A column assisted power steering unit is shown here. Here, a brushless DC motor drives the steering column and the pinion. The motor is capable of rotating in both clockwise and anti-clockwise directions. An electronic control unit decides the amount of power the motor should transfer to the column. The ECU takes the following inputs, such as the torque the driver has applied to the steering wheel, the steering angle, the steering wheel's speed, and the vehicle speed, and then decides the appropriate torque to be supplied. A Hall Effect-based sensor and torsion bar arrangement is used to measure the driver's torque input. Due to the motor's power assistance, the steering wheel rotation becomes effortless for the driver. Do you think this is a perfect mechanism? Wait for a moment and think about what happens to this steering in the case of a motor failing. You might be aware of the fact that a worm screw can turn a worm gear, but a worm gear cannot turn a worm screw. This means that if the motor fails, any manual rotation by the driver will be blocked by this constraint of the worm drive. In short, the steering becomes jammed. To overcome this issue, the rotation from the steering wheel is never directly connected to the worm gear. Instead, it passes through a planetary gear set. Here, the driver's rotation is given to the sun gear. The output is drawn from the carrier, and the worm gear also becomes ring gear of the planetary gear set. During normal operation, power from the ring gear will be easily transferred to the carrier. 
In case of motor failure, the ring gear cannot move. However, you can see the driver's manual rotation of the sun gear will be transferred to the carrier and finally to the pinion gear. Hope you all uh, have a clear look about this video. As we have discussed earlier in our slides, in case of failure of uh, electrical control unit, then the driver can uh, go through the manual drive by the help of sun gaze as shown in this, uh, especially in case of uh, power steering. Hope you all understand this uh, steering uh, mechanism clearly. Meet you all in my next session. Thank you.